If you're a woman in perimenopause who is struggling to lose weight, have you ever considered how your blood sugar might impact your results? In this episode, I am going to talk about my experience using a continuous glucose monitor to track my blood sugar and some of the changes that I made to my diet and lifestyle in order to lose the perimenopause weight. Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. I am Tina Hoppert. I'm the woman behind the Carrots and Cake brand as well as a functional diagnostic nutrition practitioner. And today I am really excited to share with you my experience with a NutriSense continuous glucose monitor. So sometimes you might hear of it referred to as a CGM, continuous glucose monitor. And it's basically a little sensor that you wear on the back of your arm and it monitors your glucose response 24 seven. The one I used was called NutriSense and it took readings every 15 minutes automatically. So if you were somebody who is diabetic, maybe you have been doing the little blood pricks and everything on your finger, you don't have to do anything. The CGM does it all for you. And it basically records how your body responds to certain meals that you consume, certain foods that you consume, meal timing, if you're doing any sort of fasting or intermittent fasting, how your glucose responds to exercise exercise and stress and a bad night of sleep. So there's a lot of things or a lot of data that you can get from this one tool. And I think it is absolutely fascinating because with that data from there, you can make changes to your diet and lifestyle. So another cool thing about the CGM is that it gives you data in real time. Like I mentioned, it gives you readings every 15 minutes. So you can literally eat your breakfast and see how your glucose responds. You could do a workout and see what happens to your glucose during the workout and then after the workout. And then from there, you can make changes to what you were doing, what you're consuming. And it just, like I said, totally fascinating. So how the CGM works, basically, you know, it comes in the mail, there's like a little kit there and you apply it to the back of your arm and it stays on the back of your arm for two weeks. It's basically on there attached with, you know, like a sticky substance that like really, really stays on there. And then uh, NutriSense sent me almost like a big, like band-aid cover. <laughs> to put over it, to protect it from, you know, water and things like that. You can absolutely shower with it. Not a big deal. You can work out with it. You could probably swim with it. I just wouldn't do a ton of swimming just because of the chlorine and the sticker might not stay on there as well as it could. You could always get another sticker or a cover to put over it to protect it, but it's a very small little sensor and there is a needle in there, but the needle doesn't actually go into your your skin in your blood. So it's measuring the interstitial fluid between your cells. And from there it can gather data about what is happening with your glucose. So it's not actually in your body <laughs> and it doesn't hurt at all. When you apply it, it does not hurt. It just sticks to the back of your arm. And that's how it takes readings every 15 minutes, but it takes readings all day long. And basically it pairs with an app and the app is so cool, so insightful. There's so many bells and whistles. I mean, the app is amazing as far as just accountability goes because you are seeing what is happening with your glucose. And then from there, you can make changes and tweaks, whether it's adding more protein to your meals or more fat or more fiber or different things to mitigate that spike in your glucose. It can just give you so many good insights and it does that. It kind of looks at your whole week, your whole day, and really helps you draw conclusions. And I have so many great things to say about the CGM. NutriSense pairs you with a registered dietitian who is very on top of the communication. Like you can reach out to him or her whenever you'd like with questions on your data to get more information, to get feedback, to get food ideas, things like that. And then also the dietitian will reach out to you and give you feedback, you know? So it's a really great relationship. And I just feel like I learned so much about myself, my body, glucose, and it was just so helpful having that person as a support and accountability person, just because, yeah, like doing this for the first time, it is a lot of data. It's really interesting. Like you're trying to put the pieces together on how you should make changes to your diet and lifestyle. And just having that person accessible to you was a huge part of this whole experience. Okay, so clearly I'm a big fan of the CGM and what I tell our clients or anybody that's maybe having blood sugar issues or thinks that they have a blood sugar issue, I tell them to invest in the CGM for two weeks and just use that data the best you can and run with it. Because honestly, like 
getting that data, interpreting it with the help of a dietitian, and starting to make sustainable changes to your diet and lifestyle can be just a really good springboard for moving forward and having those amazing habits and getting your blood sugar under control. And like I said, even if you do it for those two weeks and never use a CGM ever again, I just feel like that data is so helpful and can really drive like actual behavior change and can just help you feel better, have more energy, have fewer cravings, lose weight, and just feel your best. And I mean, blood sugar is so foundational. Totally be a video for another day, but the CGM and that data is just invaluable. And it's not cheap. <laughs> It's definitely a bit of an investment, but like I said, if you invest that money, use the CGM for two weeks, really take the data and the interpretation seriously and are motivated to make changes to your diet and lifestyle, you will absolutely see results. I just can't rave about this enough as just a tool as far as improving your health and helping you lose weight. Okay, so I wanna share some of the things I learned about myself as far as my blood sugar goes and some of the hacks that have helped me really manage my blood sugar. So number one is making sure that I was consuming a savory breakfast and not a sweet one. So I you know, eat dinner anywhere between five and seven o'clock at night and then I don't eat again for another at least 12 hours, 12 to 14 hours. I wouldn't necessarily say this is like intermittent fasting or anything like that. It's just, there's a time between dinner and breakfast where I don't consume any food. So in general, I would see, you know, low-ish blood sugar. So that first meal of the day, I would always see like a really big spike in glucose first thing in the morning, which makes sense. Like I hadn't eaten anything for 12, 13, 14 hours, but I saw much more of a glucose spike when I had some sort of sweet breakfast. So if I was eating like a gluten-free waffle or oats or a smoothie or something like that, I would see a huge glucose spike, even if I paired it with protein and fat and fiber. But if I went more savory with my breakfast, I would see a much smaller spike and a much more stable response to what I was consuming. So I really switched my breakfast from, you know, those sweet things to, you know, eggs and breakfast sausage and Greek yogurt, smoked salmon, and things that were just like a little bit more hearty. And I made sure to have some sort of fiber in there. So sometimes I'll just have a little bit of vegetables in the morning, maybe some beans or lentils on the side. Sometimes I would do fruit. I mean, this is not to say that you can't have any sort of fruit or anything in the morning, but I would just make sure it has some sort of fiber in it and pairing it with plenty of protein. I aim for 30 grams of protein or more, and then maybe a little bit of fat in there just to keep things stable. But that was definitely a big change for me and I saw it change in the CGM data. I just saw less of a spike and I think it really honestly helped me manage my cravings a little bit better because I noticed when I had that like sweet meal in the morning, like 90 minutes, two hours later, I felt like I was craving something else. I was a little bit hungry. And if I had that savory breakfast with tons of protein and some fat and some fiber, I wasn't hungry until lunch and honestly, like I just feel like my cravings and my blood sugar and whatnot were much more stable and like my energy levels were more stable too. So just that little one change from the data from the CGM made such a difference in just how I handle the mornings. So the second change I made to my diet and lifestyle habits was making sure I consumed some sort of protein, carbohydrates after my workouts. So during my workouts and anytime you exercise, you're gonna see your glucose increase, which makes sense. Your body needs that energy to move your muscles and move your body. And then typically after a workout, you'll see your glucose crash or at least get significantly lower. And that happens because yeah, your body just used all this glucose, either gl the glucose that you just consumed or your stored glucose in your muscles and your liver and whatnot. But anyways, I would get kind of lazy with my nutrition after my workout. So I'd work out and then go have a coffee and then not eat for a few hours. But with the CGM data, I would see, you know, that initial spike during the workout. And then I would see the low glucose later after my workout and it would just kind of stay low. And I definitely felt it like my energy was a little bit lower. My mood was a little bit lower. My recovery might not have been as good from, you know, those workouts and whatnot. So now I really make it a point to prioritize that post-workout nutrition and getting some protein in. Like a lot of times I'll do a protein shake, but making sure I get some sort of carbohydrates in there too, because that's a great time to add some carbs into your 
life after a workout because you have that low blood sugar. So for me, sometimes it's just, you know, whey protein mixed with some orange juice and coconut water, or I'll do a protein shake and I'll grab a banana, or I'll go to my favorite coffee shop and just get an egg sandwich. <laughs> so it just kind of depends, you know, what's going on in the day. But that data very much inspired me to take my post-nutrition a little bit more seriously instead of being so lax on it. Okay, so the next change that I made to my eating habits based on this data from the CGM and help from the dietitian was eating certain foods in the right order to basically like mitigate that glucose response as much as possible. So let me explain what I'm talking about here. So consuming fiber at the start of your meal will slow things down as far as digestion goes. So, you know, you don't have as much of a glucose response. So a lot of times I'll make sure I start my meal with some sort of vegetable starter. So I've been really into roasted cauliflower right now, roasted broccoli, even just like a simple salad, but having those veggies at the start of your meal obviously will like fill you up and satisfy you, but the fiber in that will slow down that glucose response. And then after that, I'll start eating my protein and my fat. Again, protein and fat will slow down that glucose response. And then at the end, I will have my carbohydrates as far as starches, complex carbohydrates, things like that. But that's basically how I eat my meals. And I noticed such a difference in that glucose response. Like sometimes I would barely even see like a glucose response. It was like such a big change, just the order I was consuming things. And pro tip, if you're somebody who likes dessert, like I do, I mean, this is carrots and cake world. I mean, I will never give up dessert, but if you want a dessert, eat it at the end of your meal. So I make it a point now after dinner to have some sort of dessert, a couple cookies, little ice cream, some chocolate, whatever it is. But basically you have that whole meal in your stomach at that point. You have fiber, you have protein, you have fat. If you're gonna add some sugar and carbohydrates and all that good stuff on top of it, it can just help mitigate that glucose response. And it just has made a difference as far as how I feel, energy levels, weight loss goals, things like that. And from that, just making sure you're not consuming dessert on an empty stomach because you will see a huge, huge spike. So if you want a donut, a piece of cake, something like that, just make sure you're consuming it after a meal. And finally, the last change that I made almost like a hack that I've added to my life is walking or doing some sort of movement after my meals, especially ones that might include a lot of carbohydrates or a treat or something like that. Because yeah, when you eat a meal, you will see that glucose increase on your CGM data, but going for a walk after that, like some sort of activity where you need your body to use glucose, you'll see that response just start to mitigate or at least decline a little bit. So just doing like a five minute walk, a 10 minute walk, maybe some like stretching, or I go upstairs and downstairs to do laundry or, you know, change the sheets on the bed or something like that. I just make it a point to move after like a big meal or a meal that has like a lot of carbohydrates and sugar in it. And it just makes a difference. It just makes a difference as far as seeing less of a glucose response. And yeah, just how I feel in general, as far as just being a little bit more balanced when it comes to my hunger and my cravings and things like that. So definitely something to try out. And of course, like movement in general, all of it adds up as far as burning calories, getting to your goals. And I feel like it's such an easy thing to do. Just get outside for five or 10 minutes, take the dog for a walk, grab your family after dinner, do a little after dinner walk. I actually really enjoy that. I feel like it's really, really calming. <laughs> Okay, so just to sum up here, a CGM is an amazing tool when it comes to feeling your best, managing your blood sugar, and losing weight. And I hope these hacks and tricks and tips that I shared as far as managing your glucose help you as far as working towards your health and weight loss goals. So if this video resonated with you and you're super curious about all the CGM stuff and you want to try one for yourself, I have a discount code for you from NutriSense. Like I mentioned before, it's not necessarily a cheap investment, but the data you get from the two weeks using the CGM is invaluable. I can't emphasize that enough. Like you are getting real-time data about how your body responds. And then you also have this amazing dietitian that can give you feedback and suggestions and you can start experimenting right away and start making changes to your diet and lifestyle and habits. And from there, I do think you are going to feel better. You're gonna have more energy. Your sugar cravings won't be as bad and you will start to lose weight just by better managing your blood sugar. So again, can't emphasize 
how important the data from a CGM is and how helpful it can be to you, your health goals, and your weight loss goals. So if you enjoyed this video and you found it helpful, I would love for you to take a second to like it and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss future content. Thank you.